I've had my fiber laser for about a year and a half, and I never really had a need for a rotary, but I always kind of considered buying one, but was a little bit uncertain about how to connect it and if I could possibly do damage to the laser in the process of connecting it. But recently, a guy by the name of Peter Verdone bought a laser, and he immediately wired a rotary into his laser. And he was generous enough to share information about how to do it, including what components he used, and also the connector diagrams. So if you go to his website, and I'll put a link to it in the description to this video, you'll see exactly what he used and how he did it, and it's a pretty well-documented process. So I'm going to kind of go through my experience with adding the same components that he added. So first, here are the components that I bought. This is the rotary chuck assembly, so it's got a 100 millimeter chuck, which is actually kind of beefy. So the motor used on this is bipolar. It is a 3 amp motor, and it's 200 steps per revolution, so pretty standard. So here are the four wires coming off the motor. So this cost $245 delivered to me. Now the drive is from Stepper Online. You can also buy the same drive from a couple of different other places. I think Automation Direct also sells it. It's about $36 and it's pretty standard. So this is a DM542T and this is going to work with pretty much any, any NEMA 17, 23, that kind of thing motor, any bipolar motor. Even if you're not gonna use this chuck assembly, something similar, you're probably safe to use this drive. So in addition to the chuck assembly and the drive, I bought some cable, and this is just 18 gauge four conductor cable. You can kind of look in and see the four conductors, and it's also got a ground in there. I ended up wanting five connect five uh, conductors because I wanted to use the original connector on the back of the machine, which has five pins. And you may want to do that too, or you may want to cut it off and just start from inside the machine. Either way is fine. So I bought that. This cost about 20 bucks. And what I did with that cable was I stripped the jacket off, the insulation off, and I made this little connector out of it. So this plugs directly into the back of the machine. And this is a GX16-5 connector. And I bought a pack of, I think, five pair of female and male connectors on eBay for less than 10 bucks. So what you can do is just take five wires and solder them to the end of one of the female connectors. And I also put some heat shrink over it. And uh, that's about it. Then it just plugs right in. So to do this, all you need is more or less a multimeter because you probably want to trace the connections on the back of the machine, mainly the five pins. Make sure you know where they're going and they're actually going where you think they're going. I used a knife just to slip the, the uh, jacket of this cable. Wire stripper just to strip the ends of every cable I used. Small screwdrivers to uh, access one to take these little plugs apart so I could solder them. And two to turn the screws on the stepper drive. And lastly, some hex wrenches just to open up the laser case. So let's take a brief look at the laser case. So most people have probably had theirs open if you have one, but what we have here is a 12 volt power supply, a 24 volt power supply, which powers the laser source, and a five volt power supply. So let's look at the back of the machine. So we have rotating shaft interface right here. That's what we're looking at, and you can recognize the little five pin connector. This is just the male side of it, and you notice there's a little nub right here that orients the connector. So I think this goes counterclockwise one to five. So right there is pin one, two, three on the bottom, four right there, and five right there. So in order, I don't recall which one's which, but I think five, or right, let's see, what is this? I think it's one. I think one is the 24 volt positive, then 24 volt negative, then three is gonna be your five volt positive, four is either gonna be your pulse signal, or your direction signal, and the other one is uh, other. So pulse and direction are pins four and five. Uh, check Peter's diagram on that to make sure I just repeated it correctly. But what you can do is grab a multimeter and you can come to the inside of that plug, which is right here. And this heat shrink isn't very good, so it's not actually glued on very well. So you can peel that back and you can see the lead right there. It's soldered onto the connection. So you can put the lead of a multimeter on there and you can trace that back to where it goes. So this one, the pink one should go to 24 volt positive. And we know that our 24 volt power supply is right here. So if we look at our 24 volt section of this, our sorry, positive section of this power supply, if you haven't looked at it before, you can kind of see these three terminals here are positive. These three are negative, that's ground, that's neutral, and that's the line. So this is incoming power. And if we flip it up, you can see positive is those three. So if we look closely, 
you can see the pink wire right through the back there leading down to that terminal. So if you connect that with the pin that we think it is back here, then you can confirm that yes, that is 24 volt positive. And you can repeat that process for all five pins. So some of them are easy. The 24 volt positive and negative are just gonna be found right there and that black wire right there. So for pin three, the five volt positive should be somewhere on this power supply. If you look at it again, you can see it's kind of a similar, you've got voltage positive and negative, and that's your ground, that's your 120 volts in. So it should tie right to that positive, this terminal right here. Now on my laser, I found that that was not the case. And I initially connected everything, found out that the rotary didn't turn, and then stared blankly at the wall for an hour until I figured out, oh, there's my problem. This was actually tied, so pin three back here, that guy, it was actually tied up here to this. And I took this off and took this apart, and Peter's got a pin out for this thing, so you can check it out. But it was tied to pin 11, which is a 5-volt negative. It's a ground reference pin. And that was doing nothing for me. So in the stepper drive, I need a 5-volt positive. Now, in another diagram that someone else posted, um, they've got their rotary, the drive, going to pin number 5 on this connector. So I just moved pin 11 to pin 5. I desoldered and resoldered. And it works fine now, so I think that's all I needed to do. Pin 4 actually connects directly from this 5-volt power supply directly to the board here and four and five are internally connected. This is pretty easy to do, to desolder, to unscrew this. It's not that bad once you get into it. So if your laser is like that as well, you may have to do that. Uh, this is just an eBay laser from a couple, let's see, from about 18 months ago. So if you bought one on eBay, you may face the same problem or you may not. So let's go back to the components. So let's quickly take a look at this stepper drive and see how it's actually wired. So let's look at the easy stuff first. So you can see these four wires down here lead directly from the motor and they go to these four terminals at the bottom of the stepper drive. So you can see A positive, A, A negative, B positive, B negative. That means the motor has two coils inside of it, and the two wires coming from each coil are connected to each other. So if you pull out your multimeter and you just connect it directly to these two wires, you'll see continuity between a pair of wires and continuity between another pair of wires. And a lot of these motors are just plain labeled. They'll, they'll tell you which one is A positive and A negative and B positive and B negative. So that's not terribly difficult. And also you can see I flagged every one of these just so I could idiot proof it for myself. And I just did that with a little label maker. So beyond these four terminals, we have two more for your 24 volt positive that gives power to this entire drive. And then you have a ground here, which is gonna be your 24 volt negative. So both of those are coming directly from the back of your laser if you wire it like I do and use this little connector. So you can see this is all leading from the same little group. So that's just giving power to your uh, drive here. Let's skip over this middle section for the moment. That's just a bunch of dip switches on the side of the machine. It's really easy to figure out, but let's just skip it for the moment. These two we're gonna completely ignore. These are enable and uh, enable negative terminals. And what they do is they allow you to disable the whole drive when you put five volts to this terminal. And we don't want that, this, that's for other purposes. So the top four terminals are pulse and direction terminals. So what this is going to do, it's going to take 5 volts, and that's also coming from pin 3 on the back of the machine. And we're just going to jumper from that to the third terminal, which is the 5 volt positive for the direction. So that's just establishing that we're sending a pulse from the uh, JCZ board to the stepper so it gets to the motor. And the direction just says turn one way or the other. That is pin 3, as I said. And I believe, and again, don't quote me on this, but I believe these are pins 4 and 5 the stepper and pulse. So that's not terribly difficult to connect. The hardest part is probably if you want to connect it through this plug and just making the plug, that's probably the most time consuming thing. So let's look at the little dip switches on the side of the machine now. You can see there are what, eight. So that's when we come to these tables on the front. You can see this is a current setting. So how much current do we want to deliver to the motor? So we said this is a three amp motor and you can see this RMS column right here and a peak column right here. So my understanding is motors most often are quoted at RMS. So when we say we have a three amp motor, we can probably stay well under that or right on it more or less. I think Peter set his to two point, uh, what does that say, six nine. So that would be dip switches one, two, and three in positions on, off, and off. So let's look at 
dip switches one, two, and three. So on is the down position, and you can see one is down, two is up, three is up. So we got on, off, off. So that's good. Then let's move down, and you can see we've got a little bit of text between the two tables that says switch four, off equals half current, on equals full current. So that means in the motor's idle state, when you're not using it but it's powered on, how much current is being delivered to it. So if you were milling using this for on a mill where you want to establish a position then hold that position very definitely, you probably want to use full current. In our case for the laser, we probably don't care, so off is probably fine, half current. So that will be in the off position. And you can see I've got it in the off position. So the last four switches are five, six, seven, and eight, and that's establishing how many pulses we have per revolution. So this motor is a 200 pulse per revolution motor. That's pretty standard. That means 1.8 degrees per pulse. You don't really need to know that. And I also have this reducer on it. You can ignore that. There is a little box in EasyCAD where you can put that you have a reducer, but either way, the pulses are gonna be the same. So you're choosing how many pulses. My understanding of pulses is that the larger the number is, the little bit more current you'll need. So I've seen most people say that their Chinese lasers, Chinese rotaries, as they're delivered, come at 6,400 or 12,800 pulses. So I've set mine to 12,800. That means the switch 5, 6, 7, and 8 are going to be on, off, off, on. So if we look at the switches once more, we've got 5 is on, 6 is off, 7 is off, and 8 is on. So that sounds right. So that should give us 12,800 pulses. And you just enter that number directly into EasyCAD on the screen, and I can show you where that is. So really, the only hiccup I ran into was when I was trying to find my 5-volt positive, and it linked up to a 5-volt negative. So other than that, it was a relatively smooth process, and I have tested it, and it does seem to work. Okay, so I've connected the rotary, and I chose to put the stepper drive along with a separate 24 volt power supply into a little polycarbonate box in the back and power it separately for the moment. Eventually I'll probably move the stepper drive probably right up here or somewhere inside the case and not run a separate 24 volt power supply. I'll just run directly to here but for the moment I've isolated the two leads coming off of the GX16 connector on the back. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is so I don't have to have the actual laser source powered up. Okay so I'm going to leave the camera pointed at the top of the chuck here and keep in mind that's a 100 millimeter chuck. So we're gonna jump into EasyCAD and look at the settings that we need to set up this thing for the first time. Okay, so we're in EasyCAD. All we need to do is jump up to this laser menu at the top of the screen. We'll go to Split Mark 2. And you can see that we have a couple boxes here, but for the moment, let's just focus on the center where it says Axis Step, and it has an up and down arrow. What we can do is put in a dimension in millimeters that we want the uh, rotary to turn. In order to make sure that we're turning the right amount, we need to make sure that our stepper drive pulses per round agree with what it says in EasyCAD. To do that, we go to the parameter menu right here. And if you notice, the first box we have available here. So on steps for rotation, if we had zero half-stepping, micro-stepping, anything on the driver, we would leave it at 200 because this motor has 200 steps per revolution. But since we're using the driver and we have it set to, if you recall, our dip switch setting, it's 12,800 steps for rotation. That's what we need to put in this box. So 12,800. Now, I said for my case and probably for nobody else's, I have this 6 to 1 reducer, so I need to account for that gear ratio as well. So if you look over on the right side of the screen, we have a little box that says rotate axis and gear ratio. So we need to put a 6 there. And notice we also have a part diameter. Now, I've got the light shining right on the top of the chuck. And remember, this chuck is 100 millimeters. So I'm just going to put in 100 millimeters. So I'm going to say OK. And if we change our axis step to go all the way around the chuck, that'll be pi times 100 millimeters, which is 314.15. And that should return right back to the little dot I drew on here. So let me make it bigger. You can see where we are, we should get right back to that same point when I press the up arrow. And you can change the speed this rotates as well. Well, that looks pretty close. That 
that looks okay to me. So that's basically what I've done for setup and you may notice that I have a little eight millimeter pin sticking out of the chuck. So I'm gonna set this off of there, kind of center it. I'm already focused to the correct height. So let's quit this screen and quickly jump into rotary mark. So I've just got a sample piece of text on the screen oriented vertically and it is hatched at zero degrees and the line spacing is 0.05 millimeters and you'll notice our split size is also 0.05 millimeters. So the total height of this is set to 25 millimeters which is approximately pi times the 8 millimeter diameter so it should wrap almost all the way around the pin just short maybe 0.1 millimeters and the height is going to be about 8 millimeters. All right, so there's our result. Let's take it out of the chuck. So you can see the starting point pretty much matches the ending point, so that's pretty good. If anybody has any questions, comments, feel free to chime in in the comments below. Thanks for watching.